Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Hammer Street Productions tutorial in our series, How to Make a Podcast with Only Free Software. Uh, my name is Michael Beakley. I'm glad you could join us today. Today, we're going to talk about noise suppression and a little bit about noise gating using only free software. We've got three pieces of software we're going to talk about today. The first one is I am in a software called OBS, which is Open Broadcasting Software. Okay, so we're going to work with three pieces of software today. The first one is called OBS, which is open broadcasting software. Uh, this one's really useful for live streaming your content or even just making some solid recordings involving uh, your camera and uh, some display capture. You can bring photos and videos. OBS is very powerful software and a lot of people out there are using it. And it's free. It's free to use. So I recommend using OBS. So in OBS, there's two different ways that we can suppress noise. Um, it's actually not in our settings. It's actually going to be here in filters. So go to my microphone. You can see the mic bouncing up and down in the yellow. And that's that's me talking, being registered right here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into here, into filters. Okay. Uh, I've got both of them pulled up here. Noise suppression is my recommendation for beginners. I think this one's the easiest one to use. It's just a fader bar, right? So with our noise suppression, what we can do is we can start here at zero. That's zero dB of noise suppression. I generally find that when I bring it down to 30, um, I really choke off the noise in my sound. If I want something to be a little more clear, I probably would put it at minus 10, okay? But if we bring it down to minus 60, that's really taking out a lot of noise, okay? I might not recommend this unless you are recording in a really, really loud uh, situation. I would recommend trying to find some organic ways to reduce your 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 background noise if you feel the need to go down there 30 is where i go just for casual uh heavy noise suppression but but really i think it'd be nice to have like a, a level 10 okay or a level 15 so those are here is the least amount and here is the most pretty simple to use 30 is something I generally try to stick by. But guys, with any of these noise suppression techniques, uh, I can't recommend enough. Test it, okay? With everything in audio, you're going to want to test it. You're going to want to make recordings, do dry runs just by yourself, record it, practice it, make sure you have your settings uh, to your desired levels. And then when you have your guest on for your podcast, then you can be more concerned about, or when you're just recording your podcast by yourself, if that's what you do as a solo podcast, that's fine. When you're creating content, you don't want to think about audio, okay? Think about audio in a practice run. So I recommend working on this. 30 is my number. I like it. I think it works for me. My room is also not too noisy. I don't have any kids yet. Um, my pet is a cat. It doesn't make too much sound. So if you've got a loud dog, if you've got someone mowing the lawn outside, if you live next to a construction site, you might want to increase the power of this. Okay. The next one here is a noise gate. I think a noise gate is uh, best used for more advanced users. Basically what you want here is a closed threshold and open threshold. So a gate is just imagine like a gate uh, in, in your front yard, right? The gate opens and the gate closes, okay? When the gate opens, sound can go through that gate, okay? And when the gate closes, no, it's silent. Okay, so you're asking, what's the threshold at which the gate closes? And what's the threshold at which the gate opens? This number is going to be lower than this number. So basically what I'm telling the gate is at negative 32 decibels, at minus 32 decibels, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to close that gate and I want you to make it total silence. So if I'm quiet for a second... The recording should go to pure silence, okay? Now, um, as I'm speaking, you can hear my voice, right? That's kind of important for a podcast. You, you should be able to hear the podcaster's voice. And that's the open threshold. So at minus 26 dB, that's the point at which I want you to open the gate, okay? So let's talk about attack time. Uh, so typically this number is higher than this number, okay? Uh, attack time is the point at which if we set this too high... If I set this at uh, 2,500, okay, and I close, and then when I speak, it takes a while for it to get back up to full volume. Here we go. Let's test it again. It takes a while for me to get up to that full volume, and maybe you can hear that. So I don't recommend too, too, too high of a number, especially for common speech. 
right? So I like 25 milliseconds for that. So now I'm getting up to full volume right away, okay? So that's a very short amount of time, okay? And then the other really important one I want to talk about is release time. Same thing here. If we make it a really long period of time, if I make it like 9,000 milliseconds, well, then check this out. Here I am talking and talking. And then when I stop talking, I want you to watch how long it takes to go down to, for the gate to close. Let's listen. Takes a while. Okay. So what are your desired filter lengths? I don't know. My advice is to test it, okay? That's a pretty tight release time for me. That's a pretty tight release window. But I'm just trying to make sure that um, when I stop talking, that it tries to go quiet. That's what I want, okay? So it's a really quick responsive noise gate. There's noise suppression, and then there's noise gate. And both of them work differently. I recommend you guys playing around with those, seeing what works best for you. Uh, make sure that you get your audio settings outside of recording the podcast. I can't stress that enough, okay? When we create content, we're supposed to just focus on creating content, all right? All right, let's move on to Zoom. Okay, uh, join with computer audio. Cannot start the video. That's understandable, guys, because, uh, because I'm on OBS, so my camera's already busy here, but that's okay. This doesn't matter because we're talking about um, sound only. So what I want you to do is go over here into your microphone and click the arrow above here. This takes you into your microphone settings. Okay. Go in here, audio settings. And I love this with Zoom. They make it really easy for you. You can test your microphone and here we go. Suppress background noise. So if you have a really noisy room, if you have kids, if you have pets, if you're near construction, you might want to set this to high. Um, here in my studio, I don't have perfect um, sound canceling. Um, I don't have foam up on the walls or anything like that. I've just got a rug in the middle of the room. And I've got a sofa and I've got some things that, that deaden the sound, but it's, it's, you know, it's still a pretty live room for a studio. So I put mine at medium. Um, you can also let it auto noise detect. So it can kind of vary as time goes on. Um, I haven't tested it, but that might take up a little bit more CPU, but you can go into some of the statistics and see if it does. Uh, mine seems to be performing pretty well. So do this again to your taste. Guys, the thing about noise suppression, especially live noise suppression, is test it and do it to your taste, okay? This is going to save you a lot of time in editing. One of my favorite podcasts does Zoom and does the auto noise editing, and that's it. They don't do anything in post-production. All they do is they add their theme music at the beginning, theme music at the end, quick cuts, and they release content about every day. So if you've got one of those podcasts that's like content heavy, this is a great way to just get your information out there, okay, guys? But if you get a podcast where it's all about production value, then maybe you're going to want to record directly into your your doll and you're going to want to do your uh, noise editing afterwards but if you just want to do it here in zoom here you go audio settings suppress background noise medium okay now the last place I wanted to show you was some free software I mentioned working in a doll you know let's end our meeting let's get out of zoom okay there's a really wonderful piece of software that we haven't talked about yet and this software is audacity Okay, Audacity is for free. It's a very powerful piece of software. Um, one of the things it does though is it does destructive editing. So a lot of people don't like that. What do I mean by destructive editing? Once you edit something, the only way to reverse that edit is to hit control Z or to hit undo, okay? A lot of people don't like that. Audacity then is it can be really polarizing. Some people like using Audacity. Some people like working with Audacity. Some people hate working with Audacity and everything in between. So um, I'm going to record something here. So hello, this is our podcast test. And today we're going to try to suppress background noise. Now you'll notice here, I wasn't really speaking every single second. I let some of these areas go, not silent again. No room is silent. My room is not silent. So let's listen back, you guys. I've got my desktop audio here on OBS, so everybody should be able to listen along. Let's listen along. Here we go. So hello, this is our podcast test. 
and today we're going to try to suppress background noise. I actually love this because if you can tell here, um, I've selected my HD Pro webcam as my microphone. So the microphone quality is a little worse. And I actually think that's perfect for this example. Um, obviously, you want to use the best microphone you own. Uh, eventually, I'm going to do a video where we do some microphone rundowns, um, but that's not today. Today is just noise suppression. So let's take this microphone. It's not the perfect quality. It might be a similar microphone quality to like your cell phone, for example. And this might be realistic for those of you really trying to make a podcast on a budget. So you've got Audacity, your free software, and how are we going to clean it? Ooh, as we make this a little bigger, as you click and drag, you can see that fuzz. You can see that fuzziness in there. Okay, let's make sure that we're not clicking on a breath. So hello, this is our podcast test. And today we're... That didn't sound like a breath. You can just click here with your mouse and select an area. I'm going to turn my headphones up so I can listen closely. Here we go. I didn't breathe. I didn't breathe. But there's a nice ugly hum. You can hear it, right? That's the sound of my desktop computer. My desktop computer is a couple years old. It probably needs replacing in the next year or two. And it makes this really ugly hum. So how do we delete hum? So I had to get good at noise suppression. How do we do? So this is a plugin that comes in the standard version of Audacity. You can get additional plugins and they have some really nice additional plugins. Um, but this doesn't require any of that. So you just go into effects, file, edit, view, transport, tracks, generate, effect. Come down here to noise reduction. Now notice I've clicked a little area here. I've selected an area, no breaths. I've just selected an area that is background noise. Noise reduction. And you wanna click on this button here, get noise profile. This here that I've selected, that's my noise profile. What's a noise profile? Basically what it's doing is you're telling Audacity, hey Audacity, this is the noise I want you to, to delete. This is the noise I want you to get rid of. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all, just double click, select all, go back into noise reduction. Okay, now the most powerful button you have to play with here is the preview button, in my opinion. Right now, I've got the noise reduction at 40, which is a lot, sensitivity 10, and frequency smoothing bands at five. I'm clicking my noise to reduce that's kind of one of my things is I, I always click reduce. I mess with all three of these knobs, but reduce. So hello, this is our podcast test. What do you think? I think that's awfully reduced. So it doesn't sound extremely realistic. Let's make our noise reduction 10. And let's see what you guys think. Check it out. So hello, this is our podcast test. Okay, that's a little noisier. Maybe there's a sweet spot in between that we like. So for example, 25 is a number that we ought to try. Let's try it, preview. So hello, this is our podcast test. I don't know, I like 25. Guys, the point I'm trying to make here is 25 is the number that I'm gonna agree on. And for our little podcast test, I'm gonna make mine reduced by 25, sensitivity 10. You increase the sensitivity, it makes it more sensitive. You decrease the sensitivity, it makes it less sensitive. Frequency smoothing bands, if you increase this, it's gonna add more frequency smoothing to your process. Maybe let's listen to that. So hello, this is our podcast test. I like that. It's a little smoother sounding, definitely. Okay, let's crank the sensitivity and see what it is. So, hello. This is our podcast test. Yeah, that reduced it a lot more. I think that sounds good. Increasing the sensitivity, increasing the frequency smoothing. So, hello. This is our podcast test. I think that's nice. I like that. I like that. And it almost works like a gate. Really, this is a noise suppressor, but because I captured a, a good area of a noise profile and because I'm using these settings and I've taken my time and I've previewed, etc., now it reduces. It brings down the overall volume of everything, but really look at this. It's almost completely gone, you guys, because I got this isolated noise profile. So 
If you're doing an interview with someone and you're recording on Zoom, just ask them to be quiet with you and count to 10 or count to five. It doesn't take that long. But if you can do that and turn your noise um, uh, reducers off, turn your noise suppressors off on Zoom, for example, get, get a nice sample of background noise. Try to make sure dogs aren't barking, uh, kids aren't screaming. Try to make sure that you've got a clear noise profile. And Audacity, it's free, but it can be a really powerful tool. Um, I got a replacement for Audacity, a paid program called Isotope, but for years as a professional podcast producer, I didn't use Audacity for much, but I definitely used it for noise suppression. It's got a good noise suppressor. I know that could be a little controversial. Maybe some people in the comments will say, oh, you're using Audacity and they might judge you, but I don't know. It gets results, at least as far as the noise suppressor. I would trust Audacity. Um, I use some of its uh, compressor and limiter features too, or no, compressor and normalizing features too. I did for a long time. Now I've got some other software that I prefer, but for years, guys, I was making money editing podcasts using Audacity. Uh, not for the whole part, and we'll get into some some other softwares that I prefer to use for editing content, but when it comes to actually doing the final cleaning up of the audio, Audacity was my go-to for years. So um, especially if you're just starting out in podcast development, or again, if you're trying to do it on a budget, Audacity is a free option that really gets the job done. And um, the thing I try to stress for podcast producers, final point, and then we'll end the episode, is that a lot of podcasts, especially these days, the people who are your audience, the people who listen to your podcast will understand if you don't have absolutely perfect audio quality. What they care about is your content. So if you're a content-based uh, podcast, like a lot of people are, if you're a talk show, these tools will do you well. You don't have to spend a ton of money on a program like Isotope. As much as I love Isotope, oh my goodness, I love it. But you don't have to spend that much money on it if you just have a talk show based, uh, content based, trying to produce a podcast every week, every day podcast. Okay. So Audacity will work just fine for you. So those are our three options today, guys. Um, so what did we learn today? Uh, today we learned about noise suppression and a bit about noise gating and three different free to use softwares. Uh, that is OBS, Zoom, and Audacity. So depending on what your strategy is, if you're just recording live and you want to live edit your noise um, or reduce your noise, what you want to use is OBS or you want to use Zoom. Um, Audacity is a totally different feature. Audacity is for cleaning up existing audio files. And Audacity is also for recording straight to your DAW and then cleaning up the audio afterwards. So uh, for those of you that are recording really noisy podcasts, hopefully that helps. Um, again, take your time with this process because there is such a thing as deleting too much background noise and you make everybody sound like a, like a robot and you don't want that either. Okay. So thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, if you like our content, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for joining us for another tutorial video from Hammer Street Productions, and we'll see you next Monday.